As we learn that Barb has the lenses, a.k.a. the letters of transit, Django goes to Barb to plead and try to get his grubby hands on them, to escape to Canada and give the world the antidote to foil the Congressional's bioweapon. Come here, unless I had to. Oh, well, I wouldn't be here if I knew you were coming. Oh, God damn it. Jago's plan seems to be working until he's cock blocked by his wife. Am I interrupting something? Barr basically says, fuck the world, and tries to sell the contact lenses to the underworld king, Big Fatso. Big Fatso. How's the king of the underworld? Wow. Big Fatso is that cop from Die Hard. He must have put on a lot of weight from that desk job. Unfortunately, Barb's deadbeat brother goes to the resistance fighters and says the most revealing I won't tell you anything unless I see the main leader speech thingy. Spike? Anybody? It's Charlie, I'm here. Spike ain't here. Well, where is she? She knows I was supposed to meet her here. She sent me instead. Yeah, well, I talked to Spike or I talked to nobody. If the Resistance wants to know where those lenses are, you get me Spike. Coming right down. Spike. Charlie Kapetsky. Hold it. Hey! You were charged with concealing information regarding the whereabouts of a certain pair of contact lenses. <sighs> so much I for I won't be talking to anyone without talking to Spike. The brother is then fried, worse than Joan Rivers' face. Barb gets all pissy about her brother's death and decides to help out Mr. and Mrs. Fat. Barb goes to Big Fatso Ooh, to complete the deal, but gets betrayed. What? <laughs> oh, ho, ho. slight change in plans. Fat son of a bitch. Barb escapes by throwing a grenade up into the air as a distraction. Then all hell breaks loose. The movie becomes like a Michael Bay film, as all thought and creativity is lost. What was once thought of as a crappy movie is now a great void, killing all rational thought, replacing limited logic and reason with crappy special effects. Observe. Keeping with its Michael Bay persona, Barb randomly kills Pee Wee Herman's retarded second cousin for calling her Babe. Don't call me Babe. Finally, with my sanity coming to an end, God finally answers my prayers as the heroes finally get to the airport. Our heroes finally say their goodbyes. The Fets, for some reason, get into a mid-century airplane on a modern airfield, never to be seen again. If you haven't gone blind by now, you might want to avert your eyes. The film ends with one of the dumbest, most cliché endings of all time. Observe. I do believe I'm falling in love. 
get in line. You've got to be kidding me. It's as, if, it's as if they ran out of ideas and just decided to throw in some gunshots and make a reference to Casablanca's beautiful friendship. This movie is so bad, despite Pamela Anderson, that if I had to choose to watch my offspring burn in a fire or watch this movie again, I'd probably choose to watch this movie. But it's still inexcusable. They had the opportunity to make something at least decent. But they, like the bullies in my first grade math class, beat the shit out of a classic and made Django into a wimp and pissed all over the loyalty of Dark Horse comic fans. I'm that guy with the student guide to writing book, and I watch it so you don't have to. What a mess.